With El Nino now in full swing, water temperatures in both oceans bordering the U.S. continue to rise well above average, while temps across the country continue to fluctuate. This video will go in-depth on how an El Nino typically affects the lower 48 and what you should expect this coming winter. During your average El Nino winter, the northern states tend to stay warmer and dry due to the polar jet stream staying far north. But cold air can still occasionally pour south into the states. The subtropical or Pacific jet stream is very active but suppressed far south, bringing cool and wet conditions across much of the southern U.S. Areas just north of this jet stream will have the highest chances of seeing above-average snowfall this season, with a favorable storm track allowing storms to slide off the east coast or ride the coastline, bringing major snowfall to vast areas of the east. Taking a glance at the pressure patterns shows that an El Nino would typically feature a deep closed low pressure off the coast of the western U.S. and a large blocking high pressure over Canada or Greenland. This would allow a negative North Atlantic Oscillation Pattern, or NAO, to develop, leading to cold, snowy conditions across much of the eastern U.S. In a pattern such as the one depicted here, a large high pressure over Canada or Greenland would pour cold air into the east, while warm and dry conditions would prevail in the northwest and midwest. The average storm track would also allow for large, moisture-filled storms to ride close enough to the cold air and allow for major snowstorms across the east while also bringing major rain and snow to the southwest. An ideal pressure pattern for this scenario would allow deep cold air to settle across the eastern half of the country. In the event of a negative NAO and an El Nino, much of the U.S. may stay at average or below average temperatures. A few storms of notable magnitude during such patterns in recent history are the twin Snowmageddon storms of February 2010 and Winter Storm Jonas from January of 2016, which brought immense snowfall to the Mid-Atlantic, Ohio Valley, and Southeast. Current modeling shows that a pattern such as this one is very possible over the course of the winter season, with a large blocking high over Canada or Greenland and a low pressure near the Aleutian Islands. This scenario would bring cold air across much of the south, southeast, and mid-Atlantic, while causing warmth across the far northern tier. Precipitation would also increase across the east, while dry conditions would prevail in the Great Lakes and northwest. Precipitation patterns in the Enso region can also help determine potential outcomes for the upcoming winter season. During a stronger El Nino, the Pacific jet stream is pushed further through the Pacific Ocean, while the Enso region stays wet and Southeast Asia stays dry. A pattern like this can help form a positive PNA pattern, or Pacific North American teleconnection. A positive PNA pattern would feature high pressure and warmth over the western U.S., and low pressure and cold over the east. Noting all this information we just went through shows that a colder, snowier winter is becoming more and more likely for the eastern U.S. A large low pressure looks to station near the Aleutian Islands, a large high pressure looks to form near Canada or Greenland, and low pressure tries to build along the east coast, all of these signs point towards a cold winter in the east. Let's take a look at analogs for El Niños next. During an El Niño event, Cooler than average air tends to build across much of the east and south at a high frequency of occurrence, while some warmth builds in the northwest. This checks out with the current modeling for the upcoming winter season. Looking at precipitation during El Niños shows a large area of wet conditions, stretching from the west coast to the southwest to the east coast. Dry conditions tend to prevail across the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and northern Rockies at fairly high frequency. Considering these two maps. Take a look at the average snowfall anomalies during El Nino. A large area of well above average snowfall extends across most of the northeast, mid-Atlantic, and mid-south at mostly high frequencies of occurrence, with the major exception being the lake effect snow regions of New York. Much of the northern plains, northern Rockies, and Great Lakes has well below average snowfall at high consistency, while the southern Rockies sees more snow than normal. Some areas, such as the west coast, small areas in the Rockies and southeast, and southern plains, have above-average snowfall, 
but the amount of times this happens is low, leading to lower confidence. These next images are analogs of weak, moderate, and strong El Niños and how they affect temperature and precip. Because we expect a moderate to strong El Niño this winter, I won't focus much on the weaker El Niño. During a moderate El Niño, on average most of the country sees below average temps, excluding some extreme northern areas. Precip is heightened across the southeast, northern plains, and southwest. During a strong El Niño, however, most of the northern tier sees temps well above average, while the south stays cool. Much of the country is wetter than average, excluding the Great Lakes and northern plains. Moving back to the expected combination of a negative NAO and El Niño. Snowfall in many northeastern cities looks to be above average. Notable examples include Washington, D.C., Burlington, Vermont, and Buffalo, New York. The Northeast and Mid-Atlantic will be affected more heavily by a negative NAO than other areas of the country, due to proximity to the Atlantic Ocean. This can be seen when looking at southern cities' snowfall over the winter. The further south and west you go, away from the ocean, the lesser the effects a negative NAO would have. This can be seen in cities such as Amarillo and Dallas in Texas. Cities closer to the Atlantic Ocean have higher snowfall than average during a negative NAO and El Nino. This can be seen in Raleigh, North Carolina, and Roanoke, Virginia. With all of this information in mind, here are my preliminary predictions for the upcoming winter of 2023 to 2024. Precipitation-wise, much of the southern tier and east coast looks to stay wet, while the northern Rockies and Great Lakes regions stay drier than average. In my next predictions, I may extend this above-average precipitation area to include more of the west coast. The south looks to have a colder winter than average, especially so in the far southwest and southeast. The northern tier seems to be warmer than normal, with much of the central areas having equal chances of cold or warmth. Lastly are the chances any area has to see above-average snowfall this winter. The potential for above normal snowfall this winter is greatest in the southwest, east, and mid-south, with the best chances in the mid-Atlantic. Unfortunately for snow lovers, much of the Great Lakes and Rocky Mountains look to see below average snowfall this winter season. Thanks for watching. Do keep in mind that we are still many months out from winter, so things are bound to change from this forecast. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for future uploads. If you have any feedback, please leave a comment, and have a wonderful day.